So before you all make the comment down below, yes, I am an architect that cannot freehand draw. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the fundamental basics that you need to understand if you wanna be an architect or if you wanna draw like an architect. Today we're talking about the four most important pages that you will ever and I literally mean ever, present to any client at the very start. So the first and most important plan is the site plan. The site plan consists of some highly critical information that needs to be on there, not only for you, but also the client and the builder. So the first and most important element is the boundary lines. These lines indicate to the builder, to the client, and to everybody participating in the process where the building is actually gonna be located on that site. By doing this, we're able to understand how far from each boundary line, where we need to set it out, and then move on to further elements such as landscaping, and if we potentially even wanna incorporate that landscaping into the design itself. We then go on to driveways, to elements such as the lot itself, how big it is, and of course, last but not least, the north point. It is one of the most critical elements of the design. Now, like I talked briefly through that diagrammatical sketch there, it is very important that this site plan is accurately represented. No, none of these colors, none of these line weights are correct. None of this information that is being presented is actually used in an architectural presentation. It is more so for presentation purposes of this YouTube video only. So don't go out drawing your buildings in blue, your setbacks in red, and all sorts of things like that. It is literally just me having a quick sketch, having a quick play, to really be able to convey this information as best as I possibly can to all you guys out there watching. And I don't mean to be sexist in any way, shape or form, but it is literally 98% of my audience is male. If for the 2% of females watching, hello and thank you so much. If you're working backwards, for example, with the site plan and the site plan was already populated with contours, landscaping, rocks, and all sorts of bits and pieces in the way, you would actually use that north point that is one of the most critical elements at the start to define where your building is gonna be located and how you're gonna orientate it. Because by orientating your building the correct way, you're gonna maximize all the solar passive principles that you will learn throughout your architectural career. Moving on to the next plan that's critical and it is the floor plan. It is one of the most important elements of any design because obviously it tells your client where areas of the building are gonna go. It tells the builder this information, but most importantly, it allows you to massage and play with these spaces to really understand where they're gonna go. Something that is critical that is often forgotten is dimensions, so make sure you showcase dimensions, your elevations, and your sections in the building as well. Oh, scene change, that's right. We haven't had a scene change on this channel since I ruptured my Achilles a couple months back, so if you've been a member of the channel for that long, thank you so much for continuing to follow me along this journey. But we continue to talk about floor plans here and we continue to talk about their importance and how critical they are to the design. If you're able to annotate your floor plans correctly, you're able to position your bedrooms, for example, to allow the person to wake up with the sunrise or to go to sleep with the sunset, depending on what type of person they are. If they work night shift, for example, they definitely do not want a master bedroom that is directly facing the sunrise. For us, that is in the east, which means you wanna position the bedrooms all the way to the back south corner, if you're in the southern hemisphere. If you're in the northern hemisphere, that's obviously flipped. It goes to the northern side because of the way the sun is positioned. The same principle applies to living areas and living spaces. You really wanna position them to the north if you're in the southern hemisphere and the south in the northern hemisphere to be able to let as much natural light into that building throughout the day. By allowing this natural light to come in during the day, then all of a sudden the whole house is heated and warmed naturally and you can control solar passive design a lot better. When you stick your bedrooms at the front and your living spaces at the back, it's gonna be cold inside that living space all day, every day, whilst your bedrooms are gonna be extremely, extremely hot. So understanding why the floor plan is there, why it is so important, is definitely one thing that you should master and learn all sorts of different configurations understanding that configurations are endless and it doesn't matter how long you've spent in the profession, you will never redesign the same floor plan again if you're starting from scratch without any material to bias your new design on. Elevations come next in the drawing order and they are critically important because they dictate materiality and the whole ideology of the design you're able to get a look and feel of what that building is gonna look like, where the windows are gonna go, are they gonna be stackable sliders, is there gonna be any articulated timber features and feature screening, 
where the glass is going to go, what kind of glass you're using, what materials, and so on. It then becomes important to annotate all of these items off the side so anybody looking at it doesn't just have scribbles on a line. We can annotate absolutely anything and then move backwards and forwards between this design to try and then periodically enhance it and create it even better design at the end of the day. So for example, if we wanted to go back and change the timber blades into timber bifolds, we could simply go back, re-annotate it and change the keynote to actually depict what we're trying to say. No, all these plants don't belong next to the couch randomly spaced throughout the living room. They are literally only here to create the scene. However, we're talking about elevations in this scene here today and why elevations are so important as part of your four critical drawings that you showcase to any client at any given time. Elevations are all about talking about the language of the architecture, the materiality, the texture, the detail. It's all about understanding what this building is going to look like and where things are going to go. So for example, if you have a downpipe that's going to run smack bang down the middle through a glass window in front of the front door, that's not the right place for it to go. So if you need to show downpipes, you want to show them away from any pivotal point like this. However, at the start in sketch design, when you're conveying ideas across to a client, it is all about really conveying the materiality and the texture. So for example, the concrete contrast with that walnut timber bifold panels in the sketch is a very elegant, very sophisticated look that works for many, many people. So to be able to complement the concrete with the natural warmer colors of the timbers, it really breaks up that harsh consistency of a concrete box that many people are worried about. And then if you recess that floor again down below, a cantilever the top floor over the top, which would be depicted more in the ground floor and first floor plans than the elevation, but you would see some sort of shadows coming across. You can again break up that concrete with the glass to be able to connect that indoor outdoor space and really give people a true visual representation of potentially what that space might look like. So even though this visual aid was very simple and very quick to create, it is something that will definitely help individuals who struggle to read 2D plans to be able to understand what that building is going to look like down the track. Also, 3D visualization programs are hugely beneficial to you if you know how to use them. But more often than not, you don't go ahead and give 3Ds at the very start. You try and work your way through the design to understand what they really want before you showcase something as magical and time consuming as a 3D video, for example. Last but not least is of course the section. This information is more so important to the builder and to yourself designing this process and this building more so than the client. Most clients won't really understand what's going on here, but what you're trying to actually depict is an understanding of how thick the walls are, how thick the slab is, what kind of materiality we're using. Is it a concrete floor? Is it a timber floor? How the sections are cut through the ground, how the ground connects to the building. And then of course we can go into much, much more detail and understand the makeup of the slab, the thickness and height of the internal buildings. If we're gonna involve skylights, windows, how that light penetrates through into the building and how the timber screening that we talked about previously implements this design. We can also go further and break down this section and showcase sectional details which can annotate how the architecture actually comes together and the finer finishes and details when it is constructed. So that way, when we do go into the finer elements, we truly get a full architectural understanding of what the building will look like at the end. Now I'm just genuinely running out of places and spaces to talk to you from, but I thought I'd talk to you about sections in a very grand void. So sections at the start are designed to create spaces and they're designed to understand spaces. So for example, if you have a grand void like we have here in the stairwell, you can articulate this in a section by showcasing the difference in volumes. You can't do that in a floor plan very well. You can note void, for example, but you can't actually showcase how high the ceilings should be in that space. So at the start of the design phase, it is all about really showcasing spaces and understanding volumes. Later down the track, it is definitely about going into detail and construction knowledge. To be able to understand and explain to a builder how two elements come together and what the architectural detail is there. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button down below. Help this video with the YouTube algorithm. Smash that subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos. And as always, I will see you next Monday.